Hello YouTube. In today's video we're going to take a look at Clear OS, which is an operating system built by HP Enterprise and Clear Center. Here we have the main website for Clear OS. This is an operating system targeted at uh, home users and small businesses and uh, it is optimized for running on the lower end of the HP ProLine line. As you can see here, they are available as a preload for the ProLine ML110, ML30, DL20, uh, other servers in the 300 range like the ML350. And it is also available, of course, on the micro servers. Here is a finding small business, etc. So basically, you're getting uh, an operating system that is based on Linux. It is a CentOS uh, based operating system with all of the basic features that you could want as a small business owner. You get DHCP, DNS, uh, SSH access, backup, as well as uh, you know your regular user management and stuff like that. Um, some network stuff like VPN access through OpenVPN and some other uh, cool little things. Um, and I'll just uh, go over my experiences with it so far because I've uh, had it running for a little while so uh, I can give my opinion on some things. Um, let's take a look at uh, what I've got running here for ClearOS. So after the ClearOS installation is done, you're greeted with this web interface where you can log in and do all your various stuff. My username currently is root, which is very safe. Uh, the language I will be using for this example is English. There we go. First off, we're greeted with the dashboard here. Here you can customize some features for the most important metrics that you want to see. Right now I've got CPU usage here, memory usage over here, and all the relevant events in case something is going wrong on the server. Got uptime because statistics. And under here we've got users and groups. Currently have one user in one group, aside from the root user, of course. And the uh, action center here for the shutdown and restart. If you take a look around here, we've got a couple of big buttons here on top. You can navigate through these. The most important way to get applications on ClearOS is through the marketplace. It is very much like the DSM for Synology NAS uh, devices, where you just have a central marketplace where you can download various plugins for your server. So uh, that's basically what this is as well. So right now we can see we have paid plugins or apps, we have free apps and we can also sort for basically to see both. Uh, let's see here, we can set categories. So let's put it at any price and let's say install so we can go over a couple things that I've installed on this server to uh, take a look at. We've got something to manage users on the server. These are for the reports. We've got some backup solutions here, the certificate manager. If you want to use web servers, this is very useful. Uh, some more backup stuff, the dashboard of course, which comes preloaded with the uh, ClearOS, TCP server, date and time, stuff like that. Uh, basic firewall. Uh, one thing though that's very important on ClearOS is this app here called FlexShare. This will allow you to make SMB shares uh, and of course do FTP as well, so you can actually mount the drive shares from a Windows PC or a Linux computer or a Mac or whatever you want using SMB protocol. I've got FTP here, intrusion prevention detection systems, which aren't really useful right now because this is not on the edge of my network. Uh, IP settings is also default and a log viewer. <coughs> Excuse me. So there are also some paid apps. I don't have any installed because fuck paying for this. This is an open source operating system. This is the community edition, which is 100% free. But as you can see, we've got a couple things here, like uh, anti-malware solution, which costs $60 a year, some content filtering, dynamic VPN stuff, all that good stuff. The most interesting thing that I've found on here is actually this one, the Microsoft Active Directory Connector. If you want to connect a server running ClearOS to a Windows domain, you have to pay $125 a year just for this connector. That's pretty steep. Because, in fact, a Windows Server license is actually, for Windows 2016 standard, is about 600 euros. So that's about 700 dollars-ish. So, <laughs> in less than half a year, you've already basically paid for this connector. 
or this connector has already paid for your Windows Server license, I should say it like that. So there's absolutely no point in uh, running this as your only server if you need Windows Active Directory or Microsoft Active Directory. It really just pays for itself. The other button here on top is support. We don't have any major eligibility because it's the community version. If you want real-time support, you have to pay, of course, for the other editions of ClearOS. You have the business edition and the home edition. They both have different support uh, eligibility, like it says up here. The last button here is for a user profile, and we'll not really go over that. So let's go over to the side buttons over here, where we'll take a look at this. The top button is for cloud. This is a category that contains cloud services like running updates for your, and your software repositories, but you can also install a Dropbox backup solution or block or a Dropbox sync rather to uh, sync Dropbox files to your clear OS server so you can keep the files on here and back up them whenever you need to. So that's pretty useful. Right now I only have the software repository where you can install custom repositories if you want to that contain clear OS packages. There's a whole list you can pick from. Most of these are unverified, so they might not be stable. But uh, that's just at your own risk. Some will contain some more interesting packages than uh, the server comes with uh, from uh, the factory. Or by default, I should say. If you go to the gateway section, we find the intrusion protection section here, in which I've installed the intrusion detection and prevention systems. You can basically use these as a sort of firewall that will protect you from attacks, the most basic attacks, uh, that is. This will not really keep a proper hacker away from your server, but it will at least uh, give you some basic protection if the server is on the edge of your network. In the server section, I have files and messaging. In messaging, I've got a mail retrieval service set up for my Gmail account that I use for YouTube, which is, of course, the nosemastergmail.com address, which you can all use, by the way. You can mail to that. I will actually respond to it, usually within 24 hours, if not directly. So. If you want some, if you have some questions you want to ask, or if you want some more interaction with me, you can mail that address. It's also in the uh, in the end clip, as always. But uh, yep, yeah, this will uh, retrieve the mail for you every five minutes uh, using an IMAP or POP3 service. In the file service section, we find more interesting things. First of all, I have an FTP service set up. I haven't actually done anything with it. We also have the FlexShare app that I talked about for the uh, various shares. Right now I only have a share called Data. It is assigned to all users that are able to authenticate on the ClearOS server. And I have actually set that thing up right here as my Z drive. This is the Data share on the ClearOS server. There's nothing in it right now, but uh, I could put stuff there if I wanted to. I have six, 600 gigabytes SAS drives in there, so uh, that's... Uh, plenty of space if I ever wanted to run this long term or on that later. I've also got a Plex Media server running on here which is also available on Synology NAS by the way and uh, you can access it using a special link here there we go and now we can get to Plex and it wants me to log in which is annoying but uh, yeah you can uh, access Plex and uh, Play media from the server just fine. So you can host your media. We also have a BitTorrent client, it's transmission in this case, which will allow you to uh, do downloads while you're away. You can just leave the server running and uh, pull in some uh, torrents for you. Of course, fully legal as always. So let's open up the management tool. So we'll log in here. There's an admin login for this. And here we are. This is the basic interface where you can just uh, upload all of your various torrents using magnet links as well as just uh, uploading torrent files directly. Of course I'm only doing uh, legal torrents here so I've got a uh, elementary OS ISO that I can restart and it will start downloading again and uh, it will uh, put the download files once they're done in the uh, folder that you uh, gave up or that you put in like right here. By default ClearOS makes uh, or creates a folder for you. It's always in the very lib folder and then the app name and then of course subdirectories. 
that will uh, contain some other various files. But all of the basic apps are in their own folders in the var lib folder. Just uh, something you might want to know. So that's transmission over, and right here we have a Windows networking with Samba, of course, using the SMB protocol. You need both this and the FlexShare app in order to actually make or create Samba, Samba shares. Unless you're really comfortable doing this from the command line, you can do that just fine using SSH and just uh, do your various commands there. But I personally like the graphical approach from the network or from a browser. It's uh, very user friendly. In the network section, we find a device management in which we can do a ping test to see which devices are on the network at the moment. In my case, apparently 17. Uh, of which pretty much everything is actually Apple <laughs> for some reason. Well, I know one of them is an Apple TV, one is my work iPhone, one is my personal iPhone, one is my iPad, um, my mom's iPhone, my mom's iPad, I'm guessing Apple TV, did I say that already? Not sure about any of the other stuff, but uh, yeah. 17 devices right now. In the firewall section, of course, we have the basic firewall rules for blocking certain ports or certain services from accessing your server or from actually leaving your server, which you can add here in the blocking connections and the allowed connections. Infrastructure has your basic setup for DHCP, so you can provide your clients with uh, IP addresses, DNS server, you can just put a couple of uh, DNS addresses here so you're in clients or your network can actually resolve addresses to the internet, SSH for remoting, and uh, the IP section here for your basic network setup for your network interfaces, DNS, and host names. In system section you find all of your various system settings like your groups and users, the backup solutions, and of course the basic uh, buttons that you find up here are also located here in the base section, and some other basic settings that you might ever want to need, like a certificate service, the date and time, uh, upgrading your addition from community to business, for instance, some mail settings, etc. We're not going to go over those here in detail. In the backup section, you can do backups, of course. I have the configuration backup and the bare metal backup installed. The configuration backup will backup your OS configuration once a day. It will do that during the night. And you can always back up that file or download it somewhere or restore it if you've made some changes and you uh, uh, fucked something up badly, which is something that I often do, so this is very convenient for me. And in the bare metal section, your entire server is backed up. It will back up all of your Samba shares, it will back up your home directories for your users, and it will also take a copy of the configuration if desired. It will back up this to a USB storage device. There is no support in the free edition for uh, remote storage. You'll actually have to pay for that. And it's quite an expensive service, I might add. So uh, yeah, that is basically the overview of this side of ClearOS. The last thing that we can take a look at is the report section in which you can get various reports on information and statistics on your server, like how much space am I using, which is only updated once every 24 hours, the various events that have occurred. You can view various things in the logs. If you have to troubleshoot something, you can always read it back here. And it's just simple stuff like that, and of course a system report to see what kind of hardware you're running. As you can see, this is, of course, my HP ProLite Microserver Generation 8 with a Xeon installed and 16 gigs of RAM. So yeah, that's basically the uh, overview done with. So, basically, as a wrap up here in the video, what do I think of ClearOS? Well, I've been tackling the Community Edition for a few days now, and I think I've got a pretty good grasp on, uh, on the basics of the operating system. And what I can say is that I don't really believe that HPE is really going in a great direction with this stuff. I think there is too big of a competition from NAS manufacturers like Synology and QNAP, Thekus even. They have superior network or superior uh, graphical interfaces for their web uh, web services, 
they have similar features in their app stores so they can basically do the same but with a much smaller footprint first of all because those NASs are typically pretty small they also support RAID, they support cheaper SATA drives so there's no point in actually buying a big ass server if you just have redundancy and backup set up properly um, and of course it is much 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 more efficient to have a NAS for instance I have a Synology DS215J which is a pretty low-end thing um, Let's go to the Weber interface for that. And this thing has a small dual core Marvel Armada uh, CPU with only like 256 megs of RAM. Uh, it has two 4 terabyte drives in it. And this thing basically consumes about 20 watts. My microserver up there consumes somewhere in the neighborhood of about 60 70 watts. Yes, it is a lot more powerful. But if you're running an operating system that can't actually leverage that performance very well because it's, it is very basic and it's only basically file sharing that you can do with it, there's not really much of a point of installing an operating system like, like that on a full-blown server. So, And of course, like I said, if you want any Active Directory integration, you will have to pay through the nose uh, and get that plugin that will actually pay for a Windows Server standard in less than half a year. So I don't really think there's much of a point to ClearOS in that regard. I think small businesses especially are much better off just buying a full copy of Windows with their servers and just running the services of that, especially because you have way more control over the entire operating system because there is more tooling available for that operating system in general. Um, so that's basically my two cents on the ClearOS experience. It is it, it was very fun to play with, I will tell you that, but uh, I really would not recommend anyone to put it as the main operating system on a full-blown server. It might be fun to use it as an alternative to, for, say, for instance, FreeNAS or Exponology. So just for basic file sharing and media uh, consumption. It's great for that, but not as the main operating system at all. So, uh, yeah, that's just my uh, experience with it so far. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.